all my LJC family and welcome back to my channel welcome back welcome back welcome back welcome back to my channel family and today 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 is Sunday y'all and I really really had a great time in service as always y'all already know what it is y'all already know what it is but anyway my ljc family i wanted to come on here and we're gonna do story time i'm gonna be talking about fatal attraction y'all we need to be careful when we get into relationships and that's why i am so scared to get into uh, a relationship because i tell y'all Fatal attraction is real. Fatal attraction, when someone is so infatuated with you and someone know you have something, they will do everything in their power to try to get it. But see, what people fail to realize, what you do in the dark shall come to the light. You may think nobody in this world is watching you. You may think nobody is watching you, but God see it all. He see everything. And then on top of that, so many people try to get away with so many things. They think about it and come up with so many lies and so much this and so much that to where it's really just sad. You know, I'm going to tell y'all, I'm going to jump into this story. There was this lady. And she really didn't date. She really didn't date. She really was just, you know, a working a, a working woman who had her life together. You know, she didn't want to date. She was working and uh, some kind of way um, she met a man. And this man, he just kept coming on to her every single day, coming on to her. And, you know, this lady, she... At first, she kept pushing him away, pushing him away, and she really didn't want to um, date. You know, she was telling him, you know, I just, um, I have, you know, I I went through a bad breakup, and, you know, it's just her and her son, and that's what she lived for. Her son, she worked, and she got herself together, had a big old, nice, beautiful house, and, she, you know, she just had it all together, and... The man, for some reason, I don't know if he was stalking her or what the situation was, but he kept on, kept on, kept on, you know, bringing the flowers to work, you know, leaving a little notes and stuff on her desk. And this man really looked at like a really decent man for her. And she would tell her family about it. And her family told her, you know, you need to start dating you know, try to, you know, at least go on a date with him to see how it work out. So, of course, her listening to so many other people, not following her mind, her heart, or whatever. She listened to everybody else, and she goes on a date with this man. And from that point, that man was not going to stop until he made that woman his wife. So, he continued over and over and over. He won her over. He was the best gentleman. Her family began to like him. Her her son liked you know liked him, and then he had grown children, so they didn't have small children. They had you know children of age, you know. So you know they all got together. They you know did things together. Went out, you know. He won her over. So as they lived their life or whatever, he you know probably a year, a couple of months or so after dating he um asked her to marry him and of course she said yeah because she hadn't been with a man in years so she was really falling for him and you know she just felt like dang you know i ain't been with nobody this man has been good to me you know he loves my son and you know my family love him he's a gentleman he he did everything he could do you know he to win her over and he did he won her over and as time passed, you know, she, um, whatever happened in their life, um, right into the, um, 
everything that was going on, you know, she just knew she, she just had it all, you know, she had a good job. She lived in a beautiful home. She took care of her son. She had everything. And then she, she didn't got this man. So now this man is about to move in with her. And y'all, it is <coughs> so crazy because <clears throat> after they, you know, finally moved in together <clears throat> And, you know, just start living life, you know, like every day living a life. Well, the story, uh, this is what happened. They go on to celebrate his daughter's uh, birthday, which she was turning 30, I think. Between 25 and 30, I can't remember the exact age. But um, as they go to celebrate um, his daughter's birthday... They had said that uh, the lady, she is a caring, caring, giving woman. She care for the community. She care for everybody she see, everybody she know. So as they were on their way back from the club, the bar, as, as um, the bar, there was a um, couple standing on a corner. And I ain't going to even say couple. There was a lady standing on a corner. And the lady had a sign where it said, need food to feed her baby. So, you know, the lady with the type of heart she have, the way she felt, she told her husband, can you pull over and I'm going to give her some change to help her with her baby. Well, as the husband pulled over, a man, he she she let her window down. She uh, got into her purse and was finna give the lady some money, but a man came out of nowhere and start stabbing her, stabbing her. I mean, just stabbing her, y'all. Stabbing her. Probably stabbed her like eight times. The husband, he on the phone. He screaming and hollering. Instead of him jumping out the car and doing whatever he needed to do, he just screaming and hollering. His daughter in the back seat, she screaming and hollering. So um, they drive off. They get Halfway up the street, he gets on the phone with 911. He's telling 911 that he, his wife has just been stabbed. He don't know where a hospital is. He needs to find a hospital. they telling him to pull over. He's saying, no, I'm not going to pull over. I'm getting her to a hospital. So they telling him all of this stuff to do to get to the hospital. They're on the, they on the phone telling him which way to go. And they telling him, you know, Make sure when you get there, go into the emergency room entrance because they're waiting on you there. So he, they was, the operator was asking him what happened. He was like, you know, they pulled over to help, you know, the, uh, his wife has a very caring heart. They pulled over to help, um, a lady that was standing on the corner and she had a sign that said, you know, need help to feed baby or something like that. You know, it was something like that about a baby and, they pulled over and they said she was about to give the person the money out of nowhere. A man just came and started stabbing her and, you know, stabbed her like eight times. And so the operator was asking, how's your wife doing? Is she up? Is she breathing? And he was like, I don't know. She's not responding. She's not saying anything. So they directing him to the uh, hospital. So he gets to the hospital and they said the hospital that he was going to uh, was one of the biggest trauma, was the best trauma trauma center hospital in the country and i i i can't really get y'all the towns and everything uh but anyway if y'all know what hospital that is y'all know what i'm talking about so they said it was so big they said the hospital is so big it's like its own little old neighborhood so if you accidentally turn and go the wrong way you're not gonna find the emergency room so he he did he turned the wrong way they directed him back to the emergency room he's screaming and hollering and talking about his wife is stabbed so when they get to the emergency room the people rush out they get her on a stretcher take off in the room and you know the detectives came and detectives was questioning them and asking them what was going on they told them you know the same story that i just told y'all they told them the same story and so um they was waiting you know to see what was happening so probably about an hour or two later, I say, they came and they told him, they said, we did everything that we could do to save her, but she didn't make it. So he just 
fell out on the ground. He was crying and all this other kind of stuff. So they take him and his daughter down to the um, um, where you go do the interviews or whatever it is that you do. They take them down and they asking them questions about what happened. Both of them said the same, you know, both of them had the same story, you know. So, you know, they just, they let them leave. Well, once the detective started going back to, because the girl had said she seen which way the man ran and all this other kind of stuff. So they go back to the uh, crime scene where everything happened at and they looking around and they was just like, wow, this is an abandoned um neighborhood you know this is this is a bandit you know who could live possibly live around in this area and you know then um they went and talked to some witnesses and you know once once they start looking into different stuff they also start looking into their relationships how they argue they got his uh phone records and they did everything at this time um, they couldn't get a hold to the city or somebody couldn't get a hold to see if there was cameras and everything. So they just started walking around, didn't see nobody. Nobody lived in miles within the uh, area that it happened. So the police started getting, you know, they was just like, you know, something is not adding up. Something is not adding up. So they went back and they started doing all kind of stuff, investigating, you know, right here where this happened. How did this happen? And they said this person ran. Well, a, a witness in that neighborhood they, that they was walking around, they did come across a witness. And she had told them, well, there is this man that has been going around robbing people and his name is such and such and such. So they gave him his name. They went back, they looked him up. Of course, he got all these robbery charges, all this other kind of stuff. They got an address and they say he had a girlfriend. And right around that area where it happened at, if you run back, they say toward the basketball court, he lives back that way, way back that way in a whole nother part. Uh, but the, the way he ran, that's the way that he lived. So they started you know, investigating, calling him in, checking on him. He had an alibi. His 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 girlfriend had an alibi. So the detectives is just like, wow, you know, something is not adding up. Something ain't right. So long story short, they finally get records of, of videos that was around in the surrounding area. Come to find out that man car never was in that spot. They was never in the neighborhood. His phone records show they wasn't in that neighborhood it, in, where it happened. At. They wasn't there. The tower was not putting them there. And, you know, they was just um, just investigating. I tell y'all, when they investigated, they just came up with so much. And I'm just like, I'm looking and I'm, I'm looking at the story and I'm just like, wow, this is this is crazy how people just do stuff i mean like you're not going to get caught you only so many people get away with it and, and 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 it's crazy because that's something you have to live with for the rest of your life that's something that's going to be on your conscience but anyway so they say you know what let's call the daughter in and get a story and find out you know is 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 her story still the same so the daughter came back in and they started questioning her again she told the same story she told that night no hesitation. She told the same story. So after she told her story, they started, you know, them detectives, boy, they, they, they going to come with what they going to come with. So they told her, well, we got this evidence that there was no car in that, uh, in that neighborhood on that corner. There was cameras, several different cameras. Um, we already investigated. Nothing happened on that corner. Nothing. No one. We already had, you know, a suspect. He came in. He checked out. He he wasn't there. Nobody seen y'all in this area, which nobody probably would see him because it's a um, it's a, a closed down neighborhood. Everything boarded up. Everything you know is. So she just stuck with her story. So. 
after they started telling her this, they kept talking and talking. So she finally, finally, y'all, she finally told the truth. She said that her, her, her uh, dad and her stepmom, it was her birthday. They was going to celebrate her birthday. After they went and celebrated her birthday, he, um, he told her, you know, um, I'm finna pull over at this park. And I just, we just gonna, you know, relax, chill, and talk in the park. She say while they was in the park, he was asking his wife, you know, why do you want to divorce me? Not knowing that um, other people that she have talked to, she have already told them, I want a divorce. I don't want to be with him no more. It's not the same. And, you know, so, you know, she basically saying she don't want to be with him no more. So after all of this happened, she say, uh, after she told him, yes, I do. I want a divorce. My mind hasn't changed. Nothing has changed. My heart hasn't changed. I want a divorce. And she say her dad pulled a knife out and started stabbing, just stabbing her, stabbing her like just stabbing him like he was a whole different person she said she don't know who that person was so she said she started screaming and hollering and she ran and jumped out the car he ran behind and told her look you cannot tell what happened because if you tell what happened you're gonna go to jail and i'm gonna go to jail and we're gonna be in jail for the rest of our life you cannot tell what happened this is the story we're gonna tell so they made up the story of them pulling over to help a lady who said she needed help for a baby and a man just came out of nowhere and started stabbing her. So they made that story up. He took her to the park. He stabbed her up and he told his daughter what to say. So um, she was telling the detectives that, you know, it, they was talking about divorce and they was talking about this and talking about that. Well, come to find out a long story short, y'all. She had an insurance policy and he was the beneficiary so the insurance policy was a really good insurance policy and since he was the husband and i don't know if she she had to have have him on there because he knew that if anything happened to her and she died he was gonna get the money he didn't have nothing he had that job that was it she had everything so he felt like if i lose her i'm gonna lose everything so this man then planned out this whole night he didn't tell his daughter. He just wanted his, the daughter was just his, I guess his little stage or what, however you want to say it. So anyway, y'all, um, he thought he got away with it. He didn't know that his daughter, they had got to his daughter first because that's what they've been wanting to do. We want to get to the daughter without the dad. Once they did that, they got in there. She went to talk and she was crying. She said it wasn't her fault. She had nothing to do with it. When he called her and told her that he wanted to, um, he wanted to, uh, go out and celebrate her birthday. He had all this already planned. So to make a long story short, this man thought he got away with murder thought he was going to get an insurance, had then sat up there and called a couple of his friends, y'all, and told them what he was going to do when he got the money. Told them what he was going to do when he got the money. Now, come on. Are you serious? Are you serious? Are you seriously bragging on what you just did when you thought you just got away with something? See, that's what people mess up at. Y'all brag too much. Y'all bragging rights be on the level of of it don't need to happen so um after all that happened they went found him well actually his daughter they let his daughter go because they you know realized she didn't she really didn't have anything to do with it but she go tell her dad that they questioned her she told the truth her and her dad gets in the car and on their way to tennessee well how I don't know if they had a tracker on her phone or what, because they did take her phone. They caught them as they was getting ready to enter into Tennessee. And her and her dad uh, got handcuffed and they went to, uh, they took them to the detective center and everything. 
So, you know, basically they were telling the girl, if you didn't know, why would you try to help your dad escape? Why would you? Because I didn't want to see my dad go to prison and all of this. Your dad is wanted for murder. He has a murder one out on him. He is wanted for murder. And you going to come and harbor a fugitive and go to Tennessee with him? She said she was scared. She didn't know what to do. And so anyway, to make a long story short, he got life in prison. And I think she had to do uh, a year or two for harboring a fugitive or whatever because she really didn't have nothing to do with what his plan was. He was just trying to get some insurance money. So people, you know, it is so crazy. Be careful who you get into these relationships with. Be careful what you tell people you have. If they don't know what you got, they cannot try to come for you for it. I mean... If you have a, a, a huge insurance policy, they didn't know about that insurance policy before y'all got together. They don't need to know about it while y'all together. You want him to be the beneficiary. If anything happened to you, then guess what? Then he'll get the money. But don't give them a reason to kill you. Don't give them a reason to you want to leave and they don't want you to leave. So they plot up all this stuff against you. Y'all is so sad. Be careful. Be careful. Know the stuff that... Every, I know they tell you <clears throat> every, a wife and a husband need to know about each other business. It's some stuff. No, 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 you don't. Just like, I think she shouldn't have told him about that insurance policy because she had that insurance policy years before she got with him. So I don't think she should have mentioned that to him. But sometimes you don't know who you're dealing with. You do not know who you sleeping next to. You do not know what type of heart they have, what they feel, what they're going to do to you. You do not feel, you do not know. And it is so crazy. And I'm not only talking for women, I'm saying men too. You know, because I didn't seen a lot of that. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, I'm going to start giving y'all story time on fatal attractions. Because it is so interesting to me that a lot of times these stories get out, but no one hears them. The news don't talk about stuff like that. They don't say anything like that. But if we don't know what's going on out here in this world, guess what? It could happen to the next person and the next person and the next person. It could probably even happen to you, to me. We have to truly understand. So, y'all, I look at a lot of investigation stuff, a lot of different things. And I just think to myself, like, wow, people really do try to kill people and get away with it it's crazy so you know now you didn't took this lady away from her family loving family her son you didn't took her away from this because of an insurance policy because of an insurance policy that you're not going to get you're not going to get a house you're not going to get anything that she had you're going to prison for life and they say in the state that he, the state that he in, he don't, there is no possibility of parole. So it is so crazy. You just, you do stuff and you don't think the whole time you think about, you know, money is evil. Money is so evil. And just like I said before in many videos, I do believe money ruined my marriage. I really do. I don't care what nobody say. I believe money ruined my marriage. Money is the root to all evil, and I mean everything that money can buy and more. It's it it does it 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 does, and it hurts people. It destroys people' life. It it breaks people. It it hunts people. It 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 just does so many things to people. So y'all be careful, my LJC family. Anybody else that's watching this video, be careful with what you tell. I know when you're married. Your wife, you, your husband, your whatever it is, y'all supposed to know each other and this and that. But if you are already established, you already have your stuff together, you already know you have an insurance policy that you've been paying on for years, you don't have to allow him in, in that part of your life. That's your life. Allow him into the part y'all came together as. You know, you dated him, she dated him for a little bit. And she lost her life because of an insurance policy? That is so messed up.
that that just that just angers me it angers me it makes me not even want to get in a relationship with nobody a person say they love you and and as soon as as something happened and you say you know it's over you don't want to be with them or you feel like you are a token over somebody head guess what you become the the um the victim of getting what you don't deserve it's sad y'all but i love y'all my ljc family happy sunday happy sunday happy sunday and don't 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 forget y'all uh to like comment and subscribe don't forget to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend so come on over to the ljc family and join the family join the family i love y'all I love y'all and until next time, be blessed.